Hey there guys and welcome to this episode of Gears TV and the first in our new studio. Now, this backdrop right here will eventually be a green screen where we can put all sorts of cool stuff. However, the shoe that we're going to review today has a green logo, so it just kind of disappears when we put it on the green screen. So, for now, bear with the white background. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Minimus Trail 110 version 2 from New Balance. Now lately here at Gears, we've been taking a look at version 2s or 3s or 4s or even 5s in some cases of certain products. And I'm always curious what makes designers and brands and manufacturers, what makes them change things from one version to another? Is it the feedback? And if it is the feedback, are they listening to all the feedback or is it selective depending on things and perceptions that they have internally? Now, one of those shoes that I'm really curious to talk about today is the 110 V2 because the 110, the Minimus Trail 110 version 1, had a ton of fans, but it also had massive durability problems on the upper. So let's get into this shoe right here and see if they've been able to address those problems and then some. Probably one of the biggest changes in the 110 version 2 is the outsole. Now, in version 1, it was pretty well lugged, but it wasn't nearly as aggressive of a lug layout or pattern. On this case, it is made from New Balance's HHR, which stands for Hydrohesion Rubber, made of New Balance's HHR, which is a little softer with a durometer of 76, making it more sticky and apt to be able to shape around rocks and debris and things like that on the trail. Another big change is that the lug layout is exactly like that of the Minimus Trail Zero V2, which we took a look at a little while ago. You can see that review right there. And on that review, we talked about how aggressive these lugs are. Now, on the Zero V2 versus the 110 V2, the lugs are not quite as deep. You can see there on this shoe, they're an average of about six millimeters deep, whereas they're about four millimeters deep on this shoe. Now, this is a full contact outsole. In other words, there are no gaps, whether they be on the medial or lateral side that are kind of raised out of the way. This is gonna give you great ground feel from the outsole all the way up through the rest of the shoe, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, the other thing is that that this is not the most aggressive uh, lug setup in the world. However, in my experience, I really noticed that it gripped on pretty much everything. And because these lugs aren't quite as long as in say the Zero V2, what they did was they make it more apt for other trails, things like fire roads or well-packed single track and things like that. But it can still have, it still has the capability to go off on scrub or up ascents that have maybe a little bit loose or something like that. And we're going to get into this a little bit more in the ride section in just a minute. Probably one of the coolest things about this is that it fills that middle ground between being a kind of a trail cruiser and a really aggressive trail shoe with the lower lugs but still the same aggressive lug pattern. Another place that some really cool changes have been made is in the midsole of the shoe. The first thing is that they replaced the foam of the version 1 of the shoe with Revlite foam in version 2. This gives it a 30% weight advantage and also gives it a little bit more cushion. Now, in a shoe that's a little bit beefy because of the upper, which we're going to get to in a second, this really makes a difference and keeps it nice and light. Underneath that, or in between that outsole and midsole, is the rock stop plate. It is a rock plate that sits in there, but it still does not sacrifice the flexibility of the shoe, as you can see there. That rock stop plate is also a nice addition because in a shoe like this that has relatively low stack heights with 20 millimeters in the heel and 16 millimeters in the foot, which don't in which do include the lug, so it's actually 16 and 12, you need something to kind of protect you from the nasties that may be on the ground, like really sharp rocks and baby heads and just crags and things like that. So this is a really nice minimal way to protect you from the ground, but it really doesn't deaden the down ground feel at all, and that's a really great feature. With that little bit of extra cushioning that the Revlite foam provides, it made this shoe, even though it's got kind of a race setup, which we'll get to in the fit section, it made it more apt for long runs, and I really enjoyed that. The upper on the 110 version 1 is what received the lion's share of criticism. Now, it was made from this kind of plasticky feeling, really perforated mesh that was really breathable and was actually kind of nice, but the durability sucked. Now, in this shoe, it has been replaced. It's still a synthetic mesh, which you can see here in the vamp area. But what they've done here is they've used these kind of faux suede or kind of microfiber overlays. You can see them here through the midfoot. And through the midfoot, what they've done is they've split them into ribs. You can see these cuts down each of those right there. What that does is it still allows for some additional breathability through where would normally be a pretty solid piece there, but it also allows for flexibility without a whole lot of buckling. So these are a rib system that literally can fold together and apart. Really nice little addition there. 
on top of each of those ribs, and you may be able to see it, I'll hold it up to the camera, you can see these kind of little holes right there, these perforations. Now, these little holes are meant to just make the shoe more breathable. Because they've covered it in this micro suede, faux suede, faux fiber thingy, because they've covered it in this fabric, it's a little less breathable than the previous iteration of the shoe. Is it breathable? Yes, but not nearly as breathable as the other one. It also drains quite well. I mean, it's not going to pour out everywhere, but because these cuts come down relatively far and they're holes right along where the uh, sock liner would be, it does drain pretty decently. The 110 V2 also sports a reinforced toe cap right here. You can see where they've used a heat bonded TPU overlay. That's nice because obviously if you're out kicking rocks, you want to make sure that this is taken care of. It also has this little toe bumper that comes up over the toe from the outsole. I personally would like to see that toe bumper expanded because if you're kicking something, it's not always going to be dead on like this if you're tripping. Sometimes it'll be a glancing blow this way or this way. And in that case, there's still some protection because of the reinforced toe cap, but it's pretty much just cloth or, or faux leather or something. So it's not going to protect the toe as much as it could if this bumper were slightly expanded. Now the tongue of the shoe, which I will say has a perfect amount of foam for me. It's really thin and lightweight, but not too thin that it's going to feel cutting or anything like that. One thing I like about that is it's got this piece of fabric right here where you can see the laces going under. Now these lace retention loops, we'll call them, it's got an opportunity for five times that the laces can pass through it. This is going to prevent, number one, tongue slide from side to side. It, sometimes it's a pet peeve of mine that the tongue slides laterally and just kind of sits there. I just think it feels weird. The other thing that it's going to do is allow for a lot of different configurations of the lacing pattern. Say someone wants to leave this area open right in here so they can move it up a little bit. I should also mention that the laces actually attach to the top of each one of these ribs that we mentioned earlier. All this really combines for a really nice lacing system that really cinches the foot down but without having to pull too much and lace down too tightly. The 110 V2 also has a fairly traditional heel counter with a little bit of rigidity, but what it does really nicely is form a nice heel cup. There's a good amount of foam around the collar, but it's not overly beefy that's going to push into you, but it's also kind of that dense foam where you feel like it's really just solid on your foot. Now you've heard me talking about all these additions to the upper, and they're really, really great. I love most of them, but one thing that I will say is that it adds weight to the shoe. Now it doesn't make it a heavy shoe, I'm not saying that, but my size 11 right here weighs in at 9.9 .9 ounces on my scale. Now this is not a heavy, heavy trail shoe by any stretch of the imagination, but it's heavier than its predecessor, so just be aware of that. Now let's get into the fit, and we're going to do so by starting at the back of the shoe and moving our way forward. Now, as I mentioned just one second ago, the fit through the heel is really nice. I have a very average foot. There's not a part of my foot that's super wide or super narrow, so my heel is also very average. What I like about this is this foam that I mentioned a second ago. On the Achilles insert, it's very, very comfortable. It's not super wide. I've had shoes where these little points right here were a little bit wide before, and it gave me a bit of a hot spot. This is a great medium with that, and it keeps my foot nice and secure. As we move into the midfoot, so like here to here, this is a really, really great fit. As I mentioned again, with this lacing system, it's gonna keep the foot nice and cinched down, and I had no problems with any kind of width or wiggle room or sliding around or anything. It's a very secure feel, and I feel like this advanced upper is a little bit to credit with that. And now let's talk about the forefoot and toe box. Now, we'll start talking about those by saying that I talked about in the Zero V2 review how pointed the toe was. Now, I've talked about this in a couple New Balance shoes, and it's very interesting to me that something in the Minimus line, which started out being quite shaped like a natural foot with a little more lateral toe box room, has evolved into something with quite a pointed toe. Well, in the 110 V2, the same thing happens. In fact, if you look at these guys, depending on how you can see them, it's actually even a little more pointed in the 110 V2. Is there room for toe splay? Not really. However, there are some things that are okay about this, so let's talk about them real quick. This shoe is built like a racing flat, and if you've ever worn a racing flat before or read or seen any of our other racing flat reviews, like the Saucony Type A6 or something, you know that a racing flat is a more narrow, snug to the foot feel. That's kind of what this is built like, but the problem is a lot of people are gonna to wanna to use this, especially with that additional cushioning from the Rev Light from the midsole for longer runs. So having a pointed toe like that is 
has the potential to be uncomfortable maybe for some people. Now, I didn't find that. For me, let's start to talk about the toe box, or excuse me, the forefoot area for, first around the metatarsals. For me, this was not a big deal. Um, did I feel pressure on the sides of my foot? I didn't feel pressure, it was just there. I was aware that it was touching my foot. As I move forward into the toe box, I also noticed that especially on descents, obviously where your toes are kind of going down into the front sometimes, I did notice kind of some, especially on long descents, because I did a run that had like a seven mile descent, uh, you do notice a little bit of, um, well, you do notice a little bit of kind of getting shoved into this box, but again, the lacing comes into play there, and I was able to adjust the lacing such that it really kept my foot more centered and there wasn't as much sliding. Now, what I would recommend for this, actually for any shoe, so it's not exclusive to this shoe, is that you try it on first, because unless you've got really wide toes or toes that require a ton of splay, this is probably going to be okay for you, especially for something that's going to be so performance oriented on trails. This is also definitely the biggest change on this shoe is the fit, especially if you look at pictures of the 110 version 1. And in fact, it's changed really the entire DNA of this shoe. And I do honestly hope, I love the way that this shoe is built, but I do honestly hope that the shape of the shoe can kind of devolve back to what it was with the 110 version 1 and some of the earlier Minimus models because there's a great platform here that I think a lot of people are going to be uh, able to get to with a more open toe box. Let's talk about the ride really quickly. As I mentioned, this shoe is built like a racing flat and as such, it wants to run. This thing loves to go fast on trails and I've taken it down several trails way faster than my coordination <laughs> should be able to allow. There's a little bit of rigidity through the midfoot because I think there's a there's a shank inside of here that what it does is it adds rigidity and response. It's not rigid. I mean, you can see I can still fold the shoe front to back, no problem, but it's got a really nice sticky ride. The traction on trails is spectacular on this. The lugs aren't quite as deep as on the Zero V2, so if you're going up or down some particularly loose or dirt-based stuff where you might want a longer lug, it has the ability to get in there and really grip, but not quite as much as, say, the Zero V2, which does have a two millimeter longer lug. But this is going to handle, I mean, find a trail that this can't handle, and you'd be really hard pressed to do so. I mean, this was designed with uh, input from Anton Kaprichka, and it's really a great, great shoe that's designed by elite runners for a myriad of different types of trails. Despite some misgivings about the toe box in this shoe, I would not hesitate to recommend this to most people. However, I'll add to that the caveat that you should definitely try it on first. As I mentioned earlier, this falls into a place that's going to be a nice happy middle ground between your trail cruisers that are going to be made just for like fire roads and, and well-packed uh, single track and really technical trail. This fills out the middle of that and even both ends of that really, really well. The other thing that makes this shoe super attractive is its price tag. This comes in at $90. Now, if you're familiar with the pricing of the running shoe market, the high-end running shoe market, you know that that is way, way cheap. A $90 shoe that's going to be durable, especially with this new upper on it, and is gonna be great as we move into the winter and the fall. It's gonna be great on snow. This is a really great deal at $90. That is huge. Now, my question for you today is, what kind of trails do you like to run on? Is it a super technical trail? And if it is, do you like a technical shoe for it? Or do you like something that really, really makes you have to worry about your traction? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Now let's get into our ratings. For construction and for durability, we're gonna give it both four stars. For comfort, we're gonna give it three and a half stars. For fit, we're gonna give it three stars. Again, this pointed toe box is just something that I think the New Balance needs to throw out the window and go back to the really natural shape. For weight, three and a half stars. And finally, for performance, we're gonna give it four and a half stars. This is a whip fast, racing flat styled shoe that's gonna be great on any trail. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Gears TV. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Just click the like button down there and favorite it and share it with your friends and all that kind of stuff. Also, don't forget to follow us on all our social outlets, which you can see right here from Instagram to Twitter to Facebook to YouTube and everything in between. As always, if you'd like to leave a comment in the section below, we would love to hear from you guys. Give us your feedback. Tell us things that you'd like to see us review. Also, don't forget to visit the home site, Gearist.com, where we'd love to have you guys check out all the written reviews and news pieces that we've written. Actually, we just did a piece last week called The Evolution of the Bicycle Helmet that's really, really cool. So definitely check all those out over at Gearist.com. 
Thank you guys again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.